So, how's everybody doing today on Monday? Yes, old white beard. Sexy man. No. Old man. So, uh, anyways, this is what I'm looking at right now. Won't see that in New Jersey. But no, so here's the program. Man, I'm foofy today. Um, I was thinking the other day, you know, about if I was to have another child, right? Now I'm 50 years old, holding my own. Ta-da! Uh, sober, you know, once the back's fixed, I can really start hammering the gym again, which I desperately miss. I'm losing my definition. Only on the outside. But, you know, I was thinking, if I had another child today, what could I instill in that child in values and in morals and, you know, responsibility and a sense of direction and, you know, to be that quintessential responsible parent? Now, I've done it once. And looking at my daughter who turns 29 at the end of next month, which still staggers me. Um, looking at the ongoing project, but the finished project as far as parenting is concerned, I can tell you one thing with certainty. My ex-wife and I did a wonderful, we did a magnificent job. And I say that with all the confidence in the world. But if I was to start over again today and have a new family, right? Well, I would certainly be more aged when that child comes of age and puts themselves out in the real world and competes in the competitive art of commerce and the insanity we call American life. If I had a son, he probably would like hate me and I'll tell you why. Because all the things that I would naturally want to teach him to be a gentleman, to be strong, to be assertive, to be masculine, to be proud, to be a gentleman, you know, to be a leader, um, take the initiatives, you know, take control of the situation when needed. I think a lot of that would fall against him rather than for him because of the way things are today. I was joking with my ex-wife today as I was over at the cop shop for reasons some of us know why. Uh-huh. You know, doing what I got to do. Anyways, um, I texted her. I said, what year do you think it'll be in this country when all men declare themselves homosexuals? She says, you know... Something like along the lines of, uh, yeah, it'll be done as a, uh, a, a mechanism of self-preservation. And I kind of laughed, but then I kind of thought about it. She, oh, yeah, she goes, with the, with the current trends, soon, as a method of uh, uh, self-survival, you know. Well, <laughs> you know, things that you joke about today become reality tomorrow. I like that. I just came up with that. Things that you joke about today become serious tomorrow, or reality tomorrow, you know? And, you know, I'm glad I am at where I am in this station of my life. I mean, sure, there's room for improvement. Sure, you know, in some ways I wish I felt younger, but I'm not saying I want to be younger. But, you know, I'm definitely moving into those years of retrospect, or, or, you know, years of um, analytical thought more than ever. You know, I've always been kind of academic and analytical, but more so than ever as I get older, you know, I sit and ponder things like, you know, wow, you know, I used to reserve such things for when I was sitting on the toilet and I didn't have anything to read. <laughs> but now I think about things like that more and more and more. So it doesn't mean I'm, you know, more regular on the toilet. It just means I'm thinking a lot more about everything I say and do because you have to be very careful. You have to be responsible, you know? It's almost like everything you say is in writing. You know, I like that. It's another statement I just came up. Everything you say is in writing now. You know, everybody takes everything so literally and so seriously and so personally. 
you have to really pick and choose your want want humor you know otherwise people think you're some kind of pervert or some kind of weirdo or you know you're off your meds um, when you're just trying to break the monotony in your own mind and bring a little jocularity to those you meet but that said you know as I move down life's highway, I think it would be very irresponsible of me if I met a younger lady and we decided to start a family because I know I could be a great dad. I might even be better this time than the first time because I've matured, you know, and, and, and have grown up in a lot of ways. When I was a parent the first time, as was my ex-wife, we were practically kids ourselves. So we were kind of, you know, blind men at orgies, just kind of feeling our way around in life, you know, until we found the elements that made sense. But this time around, you know, I would be a lot wiser. But I just don't know if that would be wise or responsible to even think that way. And it's sad, you know, that even if I wanted to go that route, that in today's world and in the way, you know, people's expectations are, you know, which I think are totally unrealistic in, in, in many facets, um, the cost of living and the way people interact in, in the with all these agendas going on. I, I don't see how anybody can consciously have children today if they want to instill values of anything that would be lamented as old school, okay? <clears throat> because old school ideas are out the window. And that's a shame because a lot of them, you know, I think would still be applicable to today's world. But, you know, we're trying to reinvent the wheel. We're trying to change our history. We're trying to do everything to make, make it anew. And there, there's, no, there's no kid logic to that. That makes no fucking sense. That's ludicrous. But, you know, I have no idea where life's going to go. And I hope I'm around for a while longer to see, you know few more World Series and Super Bowls, you know, walk my daughter down the aisle, you know, have a son-in-law, some grandchildren. Um, sure. But the way things are today, I don't think I could do something more irresponsible than if I was to start a new family or even step in and raise somebody else's kids. You know, they say it takes a real man to raise a, uh, another man's kids. Well, yes and no, you know. And I think any man who would honorably do that should be honored by that woman, not just saddled in burden with her, for a lack of a better phrase, past mistakes or past indiscretions. Right? Taking responsibility for one's actions. Ooh, there's some old school right there. So you're seeing a little bit more, you know, of the serious side of me. You know, I'm not going to rant and rave about women anymore. We all know the square fellas, you know. The game's rigged, man. You know, we've just got to be careful, you know. And you ladies, one day, in the last analysis, will be disappointed. Because just when you think you won, you'll realize you fucked up and you lost. But only you guys can come to that realization. Meanwhile, the real men will just turn gay or die or disappear or become archives, like I say, in the Smithsonian. But bearded girlfriends get boring, trust me. And they just seem to be growing by the minute. Right, boys? I'm going to the bee area. You know, see a little bit of humor. It had to come out. Kind of like a seeper, like a fart that just... What was that? I don't know. Ooh, that's bad. Right? Silent but deadly. But anyways, now I'm going to uh, boogie on home. But I just thought I'd share this. Of course, I always keep these encapsulated under 10 minutes. I just hit the 903 mark. But I hope you guys are having a great Monday. I hope you came off a really pleasant weekend. And uh, as summer winds down and football season nears, oh, how exciting the fall can be. It's my favorite time of the year. But, uh, yeah, you know, I just look at all these people running around with their husbands and wives and their respective kids, and they just look so unhappy and it's so unpleasant. Oh, Lord, I can only imagine. So Sherry, if you're listening to this, I love you, sister. You're a great lady. And we did it right. We had one, we got it done, and we did it young. Peace out. Be good, people.